Good afternoon. It's Jeremy. It's uh, Friday, November the 20th. We're in lockdown, although it's uh, a beautiful day. Um, this afternoon, I'd like to talk a little bit about um, a propagation program called SPLAT. Recently, I was reading uh, an article in a marine uh, sailing um, forum. It was very interesting. There were a bunch of sailors discussing what the range of their VHF radios were. So I thought back to when I started my career. It was I hate to admit it was 1974 and I was working in television transmission and in those days we used uh, for propagation what we used to do is we'd figure out where the transmission tower was and we'd have to do um, profiles using 1 to 50k maps we would do profiles of all the various radiuses from the transmitter location uh, and then we'd use a method called the Bullington analysis and we would use these kind of um, overlay sheets for 50-50 coverage so that was kind of the method uh, that was used in those days. It was all manual. Uh, so when I noticed this program, um, I guess it was about 10 years ago, I discovered this program, Splat. It was developed, uh, here's the uh, Splat homepage. It was developed by um, John uh, Maglia Kane, and his call sign is K2BD. Uh, it's, a, it's a tremendous program. And what it does is it automatically, um, you have to input D, D, what they're called are DEM files. These are digital terrain model files. So you input, input them into the program and it does all the analysis of what happens to your signal going from one point to another. It takes into consideration um, the refraction of the signal and it takes into consideration of course the frequency for, for Fresnel zone clearances, obstruction loss, uh, all that type of stuff. Um, here's, um, here's the uh, Bell System Technical Journal from 1957. That was the Bullington method. And um, the SPLAT program uses the Longley Rice model. And there's a, a page on Wikipedia about the Longley Rice model. It's also called the Irregular Terrain Model. Now, in terms of setting up the program, uh, uh, below in the description, you'll find the uh, blog post link. But here's my first blog post about SPLAT. And the first blog post tells you all the details about it, how to install it on Linux, uh, also how to install it on Windows and how to get the um, data files in there. That's kind of the difficult part. Uh, you've got to take some time doing that. So there are various uh, files available in Canada for the world and for the United States. So that's all described in that post. Uh, and then the third post I did was an example using um, an AIS um, transmitter. Here's Harbourfront in Toronto and there's an AIS uh, transmitter sitting on that guy's boat there and it's two watts so what I did is I used uh, splat to figure out what the range of it was and uh, we'll do that in a minute for our particular program. There's a cross-section of the earth uh, using a four-thirds earth radius to account for refraction and the antenna heights were 15 meters uh, so you can use trigonometry to figure that out, and it turns out that the antenna um, at harbor front and a receive antenna uh, could just see each other before the Earth bulges up in between at around, uh, let's say, 30 kilometers, uh, or about 17 nautical miles. So that was that example there. And this is the example um, I'm discussing now, and this was what was uh, the various sailors were talking about um, in their in their post. So let's look at the parameters here. Um, they wanted to know um, for a standard marine transceiver, a standard marine transceiver is 25 watts. So if you work that out in milliwatts, it's 25,000 or plus 44 dBm. If you convert that to dBm. The frequency, let's take mid-band, mid-marine band. The marine band goes from 156 to 162, so it'll be 159 megahertz. And let's say um, we have uh, antenna gains. They were talking about a Shakespeare, I think it was a Shakespeare 470 or 474, 476 antenna, I forget, but had a very high gain at 10 dBi, and it was located 20 meters above uh, water level. That would be the center of the antenna, the radiating center. Um, if we use high quality mill coax, let's say we use RG213, it's 2.7 dBs per 100 feet. So for 25 meters. If the antenna is 20 meters, add another 5 meters there to run into the uh, radio, we get about 2.2 dB loss. So the EIRP, that's effective radiated power out of the antenna, works out to 44 plus the antenna gain minus the loss, which is 51.8 dBm. 
Now, SPLAT uses ERP, which is the affected radiator power compared to a dipole. So we've got to subtract 2.15 or 2.2 dB for a dipole. So that works out to 49.6 dBm or 91 watts. So we use 91 watts in SPLAT. And uh, now, this is the interesting part. If you look at the receiver, I took an ICOM 330G, I think it was. Um, to get a 12 dB signal-to-noise ratio, which is just above the squelch on the radio to get a signal that you can hear, you need minus uh, 13 dBU. Now, U is microvolts here. you got to be careful. And if you convert that to dBm, that's minus 120 dBm. That's at the radio. So at the antenna, we have to uh, consider the antenna gain and uh, the loss. So that means that the actual antenna all you need is minus 127.8, or let's say minus 128, minus 130 dBm. That's what you need at the antenna. So what I did next is I used SPLAT uh, with those parameters to figure out um, where my various contours are. So uh, here's the color uh, codes for the various contours. So the absolute limit would be minus 130 dBm, because that, that would be the limit uh, at squelch for the radio. So we'll show you how to do that in a minute, but that's that point there. So I picked a point um, south of Toronto in the middle of the lake, um, and there, those are my contours from those properties. So then I picked another point here right at the end, um, and then I worked out a point-to-point -point analysis just to make sure that it worked out at minus, minus 130. So that's what you see down here. Um, there's point E1, and you can see that the received signal level here is about minus 130.12 uh, dBm. Okay, so um, so that confirms then this plot. So the question is now, how do we set up the program? So here's my program here. Now there's two files you have to consider. One is what's called the QTH. QTH is a, an amateur radio abbreviation for the, the Q signals. QTH stands for your location. So let's look at what the QTH file is for the uh, transmitter location. So what uh, I've given it a name, Lake Ontario West, and that's the um, latitude. Uh, you can put it as a decimal or um, degrees, minutes, and seconds. So I've got a degree, degrees, minutes, and seconds. And the same thing for the longitude. Notice that uh, a lot of programs for west longitude put in minus. Here, you just put in plus. So it's 79.15.00. And here, you've got to put in your height. Now, if it's in meters, you've got to say, state it in meters. Okay. Now, the other thing you need is you need the LRP or the irregular model um, LRP file. So let's look at that. So uh, we'll open that up, Lake Ontario West dot LRP. There's the LRP, and let's look at it. So what do we have in here? Now these are the various parameters of the irregular model. So you've got the Earth dielectric constant, the Earth conductivity, atmospheric bending. Uh, the frequency, I've got 159. Radio climate, polarization, I've got one for vertical here. This is 50% of the locations, 90% of the time, and I've got the power in watts here. Now, to fill in these parameters, you would just look up the SPLAT manual, and it explains what all the various parameters mean. Uh, we're over um, fresh water, so our dielectric constant is 80, which I've got in there. and um, uh, those are the other uh, climate codes in there. So we would be, uh, let's see, what have I got for mine? I've got continental temperate for the radio climate. Let's see what it says in there. There we go. So those are the, those are the various um, uh, parameters you need for the LRP file. All right, so so the first thing you have to do is to, to plot the, um, the various contours. Uh, once you have the LRP file, you don't need to put it in the transmitter. It'll look for it, so just remove it. The only thing you need in the transmitter there is this. 
So what we're going to do is we're going to tick off Longley Rice path loss analysis, and you're going to tick all these boxes here. Metric units, earth radius multiplier. The KML file is what you need to look at uh, the uh, output in Google Earth. Uh, tick this box. Let's go out to 100 kilometers and receive antenna height here. So we're going to assume that the boat's going to have a 20 meter receive antenna height as well. This is the earth radius. That's four thirds. Uh, you don't want to override the power in the LRP file and we'll set the threshold at minus 140. And this is uh, plot the receive power level contours. Okay, and then <clears throat> when you hit the button below here, <clears throat> my button's hidden because I'm on Windows 10 here. Uh, if I move the menu over here, let's see if I can do that. No. Well, the splat button is below here. So what I do is I typically uh, move this menu bar over um, and I click the button. The button. So what happens is the console opens up right away and it loads the various maps. Now if you don't see any printing in the console, you've, you've done something wrong. And uh, once that's done, <clears throat> then you can open up the KML file. And if we go over to Google Earth, that's what we see. Uh, we see uh, the various contours here. So there's minus 130 dBm. And that's at the limit. So I located a point E1 there. It's about 55 nautical miles away. Now the second plot you want from um, Splat is we want to do a point to point analysis. So what we're going to do here is we're going to add a QTH file for the east point just to confirm that our results are right. So that's the point for that east, east one point and then we're going to tick off here. We're going to metric units and we want a graph of the Long Lee Rice path loss and we'll get our printout like this. So that's the printout we're going to get. Um, so we get minus 130 dBm at uh, Lake Ontario East 1. Okay, so that's basically um, what I did in this blog post. I looked at the power signal contours and I did a point to point. And I, once I had the power signal contours, I located a point here, just arbitrary. It could have been up and down, but just on the edge of this. And then I did a point-to-point -point analysis just to make sure that I saw minus 130. Uh, here's some various links here. So that's my uh, link to my earlier splat post. That's the specification for the M330 Marine VHF transceiver. That's the Shakespeare 476 antenna. And that's the coaxial cable. And those are all the splat profiles. So uh, I hope you find splat as interesting as I do. It's, it's a very, very useful program.